let's get to uh, night of the champions. Here we are. The show gets a, a pretty good review here. 70, or I'm sorry, 45.9% thumbs up, 41.5% thumbs in the middle, 12.6% thumbs down. Most people agree the best match is Triple H and John Cena, followed by Edge and Batista. Let's get into the matches. We're at the American Airlines Center here in Dallas. Raw the next night is in Oklahoma City. Oh, that's fresh. That's fresh. Uh, Jeff Hardy is going to pin MVP in the dark match with a swanton. Hardy's going to get a huge reaction, and the reaction is said to be bigger than a lot of folks who were on the actual pay per view. So we're starting off pretty hot here. And then we get going with Miz and John Morrison retaining the tag titles, beating Fit Finley and Hornswoggle. Even though the first two matches involve talent on the ECW roster, they have Jim Ross and Mick Foley announce them. What'd you think of the, those two tag teams, Miz and John Morrison together? And what can you tell us about fit and Hornswoggle as a tag team? Well, uh, first of all, on Miz and Morrison, I thought they were an excellent team. I think that they worked really well together. Two young guys that gelled and they were, I don't, I don't think they've ever really properly gotten their flowers. Miz obviously has through the years, but I think as a team, these guys really were, they were friends and they just worked great together. They were a true team and very talented. So I liked them a lot. Let's also talk a little bit about, um, the next match because we've got Matt Hardy and Chavo Guerrero for the U S title. And they actually give this one a little bit of time, nine minutes and 21 seconds. It's a solid second match on a pay-per-view. Matt's going to get the win two and three quarters. And the next match will be for the ECW title. But before we move on, you know, we started with, uh, the tag titles and now we're going straight to a U.S. title night of the champions. We're living up to it. Uh, what'd you think of this concept of we're going to start with title matches and just load them all up for this night of the champ night of the champions concept. <laughs> I had a feeling you'd say that. Yeah. I mean, it, look, I, I compare it to, After a while, it means nothing. <laughs> yeah. And, and it's it's kind of like the in, in TNA when they would have the, the cage matches. And every match was a cage match. Drove me banana. Because by the third cage match, you've seen it. They've done everything you can do in a cage. And you get to your main event. It means nothing. So... I get the novelty of it, but I think that, and this is just for me, you know, we, we do it. it. It's obviously the audience likes it, I think, but I do think that it diminishes the, the championships themselves when every single match is a championship match, because yes, it's good. Every match has stakes on it. Every match means something. And, and but I don't know, for me, it's not as good. Yeah, listen, I, I understand what you're saying. It's too much of the good stuff. Let's talk about the ECW title match. It's a three-way dance. Mark Henry is going to win the ECW title here. It's a three-way with Kane and Big Show. Man, on paper, I get why you'd want to see three behemoths, but in execution, I, this is probably not what I think of when I think of a three-way dance. That's a lot of meat. What do you think? Big meaty men slapping me. Um, no, it's not your typical three-way, without a doubt. It wasn't meant to be. It was meant to be a train wreck of three of the biggest, strongest talent that you had colliding. So if you thought you were going to get your typical three-way match, you were sadly mistaken. And the idea of these guys colliding, what are the monsters going to do You know, when they're put in the ring? That that was the idea. And to me, it delivered in that. It wasn't pretty. It wasn't meant to be pretty. It was meant to be three big guys going at it and fighting it out for the championship. And to me, I thought that it succeeded. Well, there's no doubt it succeeded in that. There's uh, one fun line in the match, if you're on Mike Adamley alert. And I know that, you know, we didn't know Mike's back then guy. what was going on with Mike. Now we know that man, Mike was undiagnosed with some really tough stuff. 
Yeah. But before we knew that at the time, fans were just jumping on him to call Jeff Hardy, Jeff Harvey or something silly. Well, we had one moment in this match when Kane is down in front of the table, the announce table, Mike Adamly said, Kane down in front of our broadcast thing. And Taz goes, Mike, it's a table. And I don't know why I was Taz saying, Mike, it's a table made me laugh. Well, it's a thing. It is a thing as well. Uh, they're going to do the, uh, the first wasn't wrong. CM Punk is going to come out and do a promo. And he's saying that he hopes that, uh, both Cena and Batista win so he can use his briefcase to challenge for it. Next up, we've got Ted DiBiase and Cody Rhodes who are going to wind up as the world tag team champions beating Bob Holly and Cody Rhodes here. Um, chat me up here. DiBiase's coming out to the song priceless. He's going to claim his partner hadn't arrived yet. He needs 10 more minutes. His request is denied. So they're starting the match two on one when, what do you know? DiBiase announces it's actually Cody Rhodes. Who's my secret partner. And they're the new champions. what do you think of that creative? I mean, I thought it was good for the, for the time. And it was a way to get, look, two of the biggest names in the business and Ted DiBiase and Dusty Rhodes and have their offspring teaming together. Um, to me, it worked. I, I liked the team. I like the combination of those guys. And I like the combination of the history of their fathers to, to the same thing as we discussed earlier on when we were talking about Joe Hennig. I don't know at this stage in their careers being, you know, their father's sons in the business. It's just a tough, tough shoes to step into. So they did the best they could. JBL's in the luxury boxes here. And uh, he's being interviewed by Todd Grisham. And he says, Hey, with Vince McMahon out of commission, I'm now the richest man in WWE. And he's going to rip on the fans for spending money on things they can't afford. And then getting foreclosed on, he's going to start ripping on Mark Cuban. And, uh, he says, Texas hasn't had a sports winner since he left the state and put over how the Cowboys choked. And they even show Tony Dorsett in the crowd, which is kind of cool. And then we get a cool match, man. Kofi Kingston winning the intercontinental championship from Chris Jericho. 11 minutes is what they get here. The crowd is kind of dead for this. And there's even some light boring chance, which is hard to imagine two and a quarter stars. What can you tell us about a very young Kofi Kingston here getting the rub from the, uh, the elder veteran, Mr. Chris Jericho. Yeah. Chris was pretty old here at this point in, in his career. Um, <laughs> look, I, I actually, again, this is another one I thought was great because it took a, a young star up and coming Kofi Kingston and, and gave him instant credibility by beating somebody like Jericho. And I thought it was great for both guys. And it put, it put Kofi on that pedestal. All of a sudden it made people think, all right, man, some of these new guys that, that, that you're feeling, you're feeling the Miz and the Morrison, you're feeling the Cody's and the Ted DiBiase juniors. And now here's this Kofi Kingston coming in and ungodly charisma and talent. And it felt good. You know, it felt good to have him in the mix and to be playing with the big boys and a guy that had been a former world champion in Chris Jericho and to beat him in his first opportunity for a championship like this. So, I thought the match was good, and I, I thought what it did for everybody involved was even better. We uh, should mention that um, Shawn Michaels is getting involved here. The finish is going to see a lion saw and the walls in the middle. Jericho comes out, and Michael Cole and Jerry Lawler had both noted that Shawn Michaels wasn't there. And then all of a sudden, he is there. Jericho's going to release the hold. And he's going to knock Michaels off the apron. Kingston's going to use trouble in paradise. The Enziguri type move to get the pin and the post-match sees Jericho punch Michaels in the eye once, which is written here as much more effective than a traditional beatdown As far as how they played it up here. what do you think of the Jericho 
Shawn Michaels storyline that's brewing here. That's one of the better pieces of creative in this era, I think. Uh, it was tremendous because you know what? So much of it was real. Chris Jericho coming up and you look at Lance Storm and Jericho as the thrill seekers and you look at Sean and Marty and they're very easy to compare to. Jericho was uh, the Shawn Michaels of that group. And they had parallel, you know, it's, it's like they had parallel careers. Sean and, and Jericho were a natural to go against each other because I think both of them saw so much of each other in each other. So it, it was it was good and, and it was also real life. I think Chris had been compared to Shawn Michaels his whole life. And Sean, I think, was always, hey, what do you think about this this young up and comer and Chris Jericho when he was coming up? And it was uh yeah, again, it was a natural, it was personal, it felt personal, and they made it even more personal and using Sean's wife and everything. We're back at it. And it's just, man, this is good stuff. <laughs> 